You are listening to Accessibility Solutions. If you're a business looking to improve your bottom line, then you're in the right place. In this show, we will discuss how making the world accessible is great for business and the economy. My name is Linda Hunt, and I am an award-winning accessibility consultant, speaker, and author, and a longtime advocate for all things related to accessibility. Thank you for joining me. Now let's get started. Hi there, and thanks so much for tuning in this week. This week, we are going to have a guest speaker, Kate Chung, and Kate is from the Accessible Housing Network. Kate was actually a speaker at our Accessibility Summit held during National Accessibility Week, and uh, we are very pleased to have her, and we've uh, decided to feature her topic on our podcast. So Kate is with the Accessible Housing Network, which is a collaboration of nonprofit Canadian organizations advocating in support of people of all ages as to live as they wish in housing that is fully accessible. Their mission is to ensure that whatever their age or ability, every person in Canada can live in housing that is fully accessible. To this end, they call on every level of government to make universal design mandatory in every unit in all new multi-unit residential buildings. The Accessible Housing Network wants to get out the message that housing is a human right and that the need for accessible, affordable housing is truly a crisis. More than 22% of Canadians have a disability, and anyone can be born with a disability, but everyone is just one fall, one accident, or one illness away from a disability, and that could be temporary or permanent. Kate's message is going to be that there needs to be a change to the national and provincial building codes to make universal design mandatory in all new multi-unit residential buildings, both rental and ownership. We're very, very pleased to have Kate join us in this episode of our Accessibility Solutions podcast. Thank you very much for the thorough introduction. I'm going to skip down. I was going to say some of that. Um, The Accessible Housing Network is kind of a very informal organization of organizations. Um, The Older Women's Network had been working on the issue of accessible housing for some time and realized that we really needed to work with other organizations to be heard. And it's very hard to be heard. We're demanding, as you said, that the Ontario Building Code be changed to require that every unit in new multi-unit buildings be fully accessible. It's a human right. And it's encouraging to see your interest and concern in the crisis in accessible housing. I think the theme inclusion from the start really says it all, because we're all just temporarily abled. If we're not already dealing with a disability, we will be soon. And because an accident, illness, or old age can take away a lot of our our, um, ability to get around or have, we might end up with other kinds of disabilities. It's easy to think about it just in terms of wheelchairs or walkers, but there are disabilities of every type. So the, the issue of accessibility in housing affects us all either now or in the future. Uh, my introduction to this issue came quite a, a couple of decades ago, more than a couple of decades ago, when I was living in a co-op in Scarborough. And there was a little girl who was about eight years old who used an electric wheelchair And she couldn't play with any of the other kids. I'd see her outside in the summer, scooting around with the other kids at the corner. But she was in one of the very few accessible units in a a large co-op. So in bad weather, she couldn't play with anybody else because all the other townhouses had steps front and back. So I thought, well, someday maybe I can do something about this. So that's what I'm doing now. And now in my 80s, I have a personal interest in this. I've had one knee replacement. My husband's had two hip replacements. And when we came home from the hospital, we couldn't even get in the door of our bathroom with a walker. It's just, this is a condo, but it's an old condo. And it was built with narrow bathroom doors. I don't know what they were thinking when they designed this. Obviously, it was designed by, by some hip young person who wasn't the least bit worried about getting hit by a truck. So despite the fact that over 24% of Ontarians have a disability, there's there's no law requiring that any housing be accessible. The Ontario Building Code only requires that 15% of units 
apartments, new apartments and new buildings be visitable, not accessible enough to live there. You can basically come in and have a cup of tea. And the AODA, the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, does not even mention housing. Even though David Onley has done a report asking for housing to be included, the current government has totally ignored his report. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the Ontario and Canadian Human Rights Codes, and the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities all prohibit discrimination based on age or ability. But the AODA and the building code are in contravention of all of these. The Human Rights Code is supposed to take precedence over all other laws in Ontario, including the building code, but governments, every government of Ontario has totally ignored this, the current government and the previous government. But we know that the benefits are access of accessible housing include reduced costs for long-term care facilities, Many people could remain in their homes if they were accessible, freeing up spaces in nursing homes, and protection of seniors and persons with disabilities from catastrophes like the long-term care during COVID. Uh, accessible housing reduces the need for in-home PSW help. It reduces the need for help with housework. It leads to improved mental and physical health. There are fewer falls, fewer ambulance calls, fewer hospitalizations, and people with disabilities are, if they have accessible housing, are better able to be, become employed or to increase their hours of work. So what's wrong with this? I'd like to know. No tax dollars should ever create accessibility issues. And cost is not a valid concern. You'll hear builders and politicians say it's too expensive, we can't afford it. But it's not true. CMHC, Canada Mortgage and Housing, has done reports showing that the cost of building an apartment is the same, whether it's accessible or not, as long as you plan it from the design stage. It's renovations to existing housing that are so expensive. And by the way, the Ontario Home Builders Association and the Canadian Home Builders Association both have programs to train their members in doing uh, accessibility renovations for people with houses, baby boomers, they figure have a lot of money. So it's basically a cash cow. So of course, they're not supporting us in demanding that new buildings be accessible. They make more money doing renovations. The municipalities tell us they have to wait for the province to change the building code, but this isn't true. Every city can make universal design mandatory in any new housing developed through its programs. So any new developments built with any tax dollars or on land made available by the municipality or through agreements to waive development fees or taxes, they can all require that the housing built be universal design. And we're urging Toronto to take that action. And of course, we get back the same argument. Oh, no, we can't possibly do it. No, no, we can't force the developers to do this. But of course, the developers tell us that they will build whatever they are required by government to do. They will build to code provincially, but no more. So let's change the building code. They will build to what the municipalities demand. So let's change what the municipalities demand. So now with the election, we're calling on every candidate in the Ontario election to sign the Accessible Housing Pledge that if they're elected, they'll change the building code to make it mandatory that all new apartments and condos be universal design. So far, 16 candidates have signed. <laughs> That's not nearly enough, but it's interesting. It includes the leader of the Green Party and several Green candidates. It includes several NDP candidates and a few Liberal candidates, no Conservatives. You can print copies of the pledge from our website, accessiblehousingnetwork.org, accessiblehousingnetwork.org. And if pledges are signed by a candidate, your candidates in your writing, just get them to scan it and email it to us, accessiblehousingnetwork at gmail.com. And that email address is on the website too. Then we're posting on our website the name, party, and writing of every candidate who signs the pledge and a with a photo, if we have the photo. So please help us make this urgent change by asking your candidates in your writing to sign the pledge. And after the election, please get after your new MPP and insist that they support our call to change the building code. Thank you very much, Kate. I, um, I certainly agree. And I am a big proponent that no tax dollars are ever spent to create barriers, um, regardless of what they are. We, you know, we talk about the crisis in affordable housing. That is a, a you know, a, a huge issue, certainly in our municipality, but the crisis in accessible housing is something that does not get nearly as much airplay. And I certainly appreciate the work of the Accessible Housing Network in uh, bringing that issue forward. We need to make 
our voice is uh, heard. As Kate said, we, we talk about 22% of the population. Um, and yes, when you're talking baby boomers, it's 40% of the population over the age of 65 that has some form of a disability. So this is uh, a number that is only going to continue to grow. So uh, I certainly appreciate the work, Kate, that you and your group are doing. I again want to thank Kate so much for her presentation um, that she did for our Accessibility Summit. And if you have any um, questions for the Accessible Housing Network, or you want to get in touch with Kate or the Accessible Housing Network, their contact information is in the show notes. And again, keep in mind that there truly is a crisis in accessible housing in Canada. And we were very, very grateful to have Kate highlight that uh, crisis for us today. Thanks so much. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you for listening to Accessibility Solutions. For a free 15-minute consultation to discuss how accessibility can improve your business bottom line, please visit solutions, the number four, accessibility.com. I love hearing from my listeners, so please feel free to email me at lynda at solutionsforaccessibility.com or connect with Accessibility Solutions on LinkedIn, Facebook, or subscribe to the Accessibility Solutions YouTube channel. 